amuka da jokers managing director rural disabled women association rudiwa a community based organization operating in Rwenzori sub region particularly in Vundubujo district and Doroko a uh, rural disabled women association is a community based organization founded in 2016 and founded by young women and girls with disabilities in the Renzori region. A uh, rural disabled women association basically supports the girl, child, and young mothers with disabilities in the Renzori sub region. Our intervention is towards ending and preventing child marriages in the Renzori sub region has been in Hasset. And currently, we have done a number of interventions, especially in uplifting the education, uh, the education status of young women and young girls with disabilities in the district. Uh, we have also supported these young girls and young women with disabilities, especially in the socio-economic environment, to make sure that at least they earn a living, to make sure that they are, they are recognized, they are generally acceptable, and therefore we are trying to also eliminate and eradicate a discrimination, a discrimination among these, among these young, uh, young girls and women with disabilities. We have also supported the girl child education, especially girls with, with disabilities, especially increasing their enrollment in schools, increasing their accessibility in schools, and especially this has been done through different projects. Especially, uh, we have funds from Girls First Fund USA, and other donors from Netherlands and USA. And these donors have managed to help us for the last five years in running these programs. Currently, Rural Disabled Women Association is trying its level best in making sure that it, it mobilizes our communities, families, to make sure that the rights of, of these girls and, and young women with disabilities are heard in the, in, in the Renzo region. Especially in rural areas where the rights of girls and boys with disabilities are not hard, are not hard especially due to lack of information. Uh, the, we have challenges related to infrastructure. We have issues related to uh, school dropout. We have issues related to uh, high poverty. We have issues related to child labor. We have issues related to real uh, stigmatization of girls with disabilities. Because previously people have not been uh, considering the girl child to maybe with a disability to go to school. And because of this, most of these girls with disabilities have been lagging behind in, in education, economic empowerment, and that most of them are currently the ones being used as house girls, housemaids in, ba in bars. And therefore, this one alone is undermining their capacities to uplift their, st their status, their standards. And this is where we come in to say, no, we should also popularize the rights of the girl child with a disability in school to make sure that a girl goes to school, stays in school, and completes education. Uh, currently, we are looking at a number of challenges that girls and young women with disabilities are facing. Today, we have menstrual poverty because most of these girls with disabilities have issues related to menstrual hygiene, poor menstrual hygiene. Getting a center pad in a rural area is also a challenge. The information to their usage is not also accessible. Money to purchase them where they are even accessible, money to purchase them is also a challenge. We have lack of accessibility to education. Most of the schools are, are distasted. You trek around 5 to 7 kilometers, moving from one school either to a household, where there is a girl child with a disability. Because of this, most of these girls normally stay at home because there are a number of girls. You cannot, you cannot have a wheelchair. You have no, you have no, you have no crutch to move, to move on with. You have no hearing gadgets to go with at school. We have no sign interpreters in schools. In health centers, we have not seen them. Because of this, most of these girls are always loitering in the villages because of lack of support. One, we are also maybe, we are also putting it to government to make sure that at least education, uh, education is extended in Niara to these girls and young women with disabilities, especially also provision of materials in schools. Because we, we are just imagining how a deaf, a, a deaf, a deaf girl with a disability is going, is going to school, is going to class, but has no, a person who is going to interpret what is being taught in the class. We have areas related to classroom accessibility. There are no ramps in schools. Toilets are not accessible. Our libraries are not accessible. Staff rooms are not accessible. These girls are going to school and they end up coming back home without studying. Because entering a classroom is a problem. 
reaching a toilet, either maybe, either, either, and, and maybe these showers around the school is also a problem. Because of this, a girl who is going just to urinate will go back home, either will go to the bush. And this one alone will eventually maybe discourage and demoralize these, these children to continue going to school. Then we have issues related to sexual abuse in, this, in, in these rural communities. Information is not accessible. The policies and laws are not being enforced, either because of corruption and because of whether maybe we have, we have law as stations or police in rural communities. Therefore, accessing issues to where you are reporting a case is also another challenge in a, in a rural community. Because you are looking at the scenarios where the whole sub county has only the central police station. You don't have the sub police stations in rural communities where these cases would be reported very fast. The chairperson and the ones are not also trained on what they should do. They don't know their areas of jurisdiction. Because of this, eventually we see, we see most of the cases that have gone unreported. Cases are not reported, information is not accessed. Secondly, that these girls and maybe even our own communities do not know where to begin from. Where should I report a case? Who should make a follow-up? And when you make a follow-up, you hear that the case has been killed off because of either, maybe, uh, either because of funds. Corruption is coming in, you reported the case to police, you reported the case to police, and at the end of the day, either maybe you are, you are, you are, you are from a poor community, you will see your case not being heard, either not being forwarded. At the end of the day, you will find that the, the perpetrator has been released without your notice. These are the cases that we are finding in the rural areas. Then we have inadequate financial services, uh, resources. Look at, in rural areas, the year, most of the organizations that support the people with disabilities are very few. Everybody is concentrating on the girl child who is, who, who is able-bodied. People, uh, people are not maybe focusing their resources on girls and boys with disabilities. Because of this, we are finding it very hard to accelerate the information. Why? There are no resources to use, uh, financial, material. Like when you are talking about maybe how do we support blind, blind children to be in school? How do we support these deaf people to be in school? How do we support these, uh, these children with uh, immobility problems? How should we support them to be in school? Therefore, sustaining them in school is becoming a challenge. That's why Rudua is coming up with uh, uh, new designs that we should also provide resources to these children, girls with disabilities in school. Can we support them with, uh, with scholastic materials? Can we support them with, with fees? Can we subsidize their the meals? Can we manage to, uh, to, to support these schools in erecting and maybe constructing accessibility means like maybe in, in showers, uh, classrooms, libraries, and maybe any other, any other pathways where these children pass. We are trying to do this as one of our interventions to make sure that a girl who is reaching at school with a disability is reaching a classroom, is studying well. We are going, to, we are going as far as interpreting, uh, uh, training sign language interpreters in these schools. Why? Because we feel like the whole district, like Nibundibujo, we have only two interpreters in the whole district. These ones are volunteers at district headquarters. It means every school that has already enrolled a deaf, a deaf child is supposed to go and get that interpreter to the district. Who is not supposed to be in a school in, 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 in a period of 107 hours of the, of, of the day? This, one, this is one of the reasons why we are saying no. Road Disabled Women Association should train interpreters in the district so that we, we distribute them among its uh, parishes, villages and sub-counties. We are, also in the, we are also training peer educators so that these ones can become volunteers to accelerate formation in the parishes and the villages. Wherever you hear a deaf child, eventually you must go there. Support this person in growth so that you begin mentoring the person in, in passing sign language uh, to this person. Then another thing we are doing to make sure that we, we also come up with, with, with good mechanisms. We are supporting girls with disabilities in, empower, in empowering them to make it to participate in decision making, especially beginning at household level up to community, up to institutional level. And because of this, we have managed to uplift their standard because then they have formed uh, they have formed groups, they have formed committees from from village parish to sub county. These committees are amplifying their voices because now they can be they are socially identified, socially recognized that whatever they discuss they discuss in their committees in their groups is, is now hard at, at district level. These are some of the interventions that we have really done as an organization in, in, in Bundabujo district and in Doroko district. The organization itself today would like to really uh, do something new that uh, 
as uh, the special needs education desk at the, at the district level should be empowered. That we should form a committee, some kind of a neck at the district level. Such that this committee should oversee the special needs education desk, especially comprising, comprising of different stakeholders. Like, for example, if the Secretary of Education at the district level becomes the chairperson, then the civil society should be represented on this committee. Say that civil society organizations, other stakeholders like uh, maybe for, from different religions, cultural institutions are represented. This one would, um, would equally amplify the voices of, of, of people with disabilities, especially adolescents with the disabilities, the youth with the disabilities across the district. Because civil society organizations, wherever they will go, they will take the message. Where, wherever the, the, the religious leader will go, will take the message. Cultural institutions have an audience to address. Wherever they, will go, wherever they will go to address people, they will take the message. We expect that this one alone will eventually amplify and increase the voices of people with disabilities to be heard across the Renzori sub-region.